Naive bias is a supervised learning algorithm mainly used for classification problems. It is the algorithm of choice for building real-world applications with fast machine learning models that can make quick predictions and that respond to users' requests instantaneously. It works well with natural language processing or NLP problems such as spam detection, sentiment analysis, and question answering. It's called naive because it makes the assumption that all features are independent of each other. For example, if the fruit is identified on the basis of color, shape, and taste, each feature individually contributes to identifying the kind of fruit without depending on each other. It is called bias because it depends on the principle of bias theorem. This theorem is used to determine the probability of a hypothesis or outcome with prior knowledge. It was formulated sometime during the 1740s by Thomas Bias, an English statistician, philosopher, and Presbyterian minister. The formula for bias theorem is given as the probability of A given B is true equals the probability of B given A is true multiplied by the probability of A divided by the probability of B. The aim of this formula is to determine what the probability of A is given that B has already happened or been observed. For application of the theorem in machine learning, we replace A and B in the formula with Y and X respectively. X represents the features and Y stands for the classes or outcomes. Therefore, we want to compute the probability of Y given that X has been observed. To do this, we establish the probability of x given that y has already happened or has been observed. Multiply that by the overall probability of y, divide the resultant number by the overall probability of x. x is given as x equals x1, x2, x3, and so on. Here, x1, x2, and so on represent the features. By substituting for x, we get the naive bias formula. If y has two or more classes or outcomes, we compute the probability of each class of y. The symbol k represents each class. After the computation, the highest probability will be the predicted outcome for a given problem. In technical jargon, the left-hand side of the equation is understood as the posterior probability. It is a probability of the outcome given the features have been observed. The right-hand side has two terms in the numerator. The first term is called the likelihood of evidence. It is nothing but the conditional probability of each feature given a particular outcome. Since all the features are assumed to be independent of each other, we can just multiply the likelihoods of all the features and call it the probability of likelihood of evidence. The second term is called the prior, which is the overall probability of a particular outcome. In simpler terms, prior is equal to the count of a particular outcome divided by the number of records. The marginal probability or probability of evidence that goes in the denominator is nothing but the product of the probability of all features. This is an optional step because the denominator is the same for all the classes and so will not affect the probabilities. To demonstrate how the formula is used, suppose we have a data set for the car theft problem. The attributes are color, type, and origin. The target variable is stolen, which classes or outcomes can either be yes or no. Using the data set, let us decide whether a set of identified features of a car is stolen or not. We assume that no features are dependent. For example, the color of the car has nothing to do with its type or origin. We also assume that each feature is relevant and equally influencing the outcome. For example, knowing only the type and origin can predict the outcome perfectly. Now, given the features of the car which are red, SUV, and domestic, let's classify whether the car is stolen or not. Step 1. Compute the prior probabilities for each of the classes. Prior probability is a proportion of each class out of all the outcomes in the target variable. In our problem, it is the stolen variable. Out of the 10 records in the training data, there are 5 yes and 5 no outcomes. Using the formula for priors, the probability for yes is equal to 5 over 10 or 0 0.5 
and the probability for no is equal to 5 over 10, which is also 0 0.5. Step 2. Compute the probability of likelihood of evidence that goes in the numerator. In our problem, it is a product of conditional probabilities of the three features, namely color, type, and origin. If we go back to the formula, it says probability of x1 given that y has been observed. Here, our x1 is color. The k refers to the yes and no classes. In the data set, there are two colors, red and yellow. In our computation, we will only focus on the color red since it is the color of the car we are classifying. In the data set, we have five stolen cars. Out of that, three are red. So the probability the car color is red, given that it is stolen, is equal to 0 0.6. There are five sample data in which car has not been stolen. Out of that, two are red. So the probability the car color is red, given that it is not stolen, is equal to 2 over 5, or 0 0.4. Moving on to the next feature, x2 refers to the type attribute. Again, the k refers to the yes and no classes. In our computation, we will only focus on SUVs since it is the car type in the problem that we are classifying. In the data set, we have 5 stolen cars. Out of that, 1 is SUV. So the probability the car type is an SUV, given that it is stolen, is equal to 1 over 5 or 0 0.2. There are 5 sample data in which car has not been stolen. Out of that, 3 is SUV. So the probability the car type is an SUV, given that it is not stolen, is equal to 3 over 5 or 0 0.6. X3 is origin. The K refers to the yes and no classes. In the data set, there are two car origins, domestic and imported. In our computation, we only focus on domestic since it is the car type in the problem that we are classifying. In the sample data, we have five stolen cars. Out of that, two are domestic. So the probability the car's origin is domestic given that it is stolen is equal to 2 over 5 or 0 0.4. There are five sample data in which car has not been stolen. Out of that, three are domestic. So the probability the car's origin is domestic, given that it is not stolen, is equal to 3 over 5 or 0 0.6. Therefore, the overall probability of likelihood of evidence for yes is equal to 0 0.6 times 0 0.2 times 0 0.4 equals 0 0.048. And the overall probability of likelihood of evidence for no is equal to 0 0.4 times 0 0.6 times 0 0.6 equals 0 0.144. Step 3. Compute the probability of evidence that goes in the denominator. This is actually nothing but the product of the probability of all features. This is an optional step because the denominator is the same for all the classes and so will not affect probabilities. Step 4. Substitute all the values into the naive bias formula. Using the formula, the computed probability that the car is stolen, given the features are red, SUV, and domestic, is equal to 0 0.048 times 0 0.5 equals 0 0.024. On the other hand, the computed probability that the car is not stolen, given the features are red, SUV, and domestic, is equal to 0 0.144 times 0 0.5 equals 0 0.072. Notice that the denominator is the same for all two cases, so it's optional to compute. Clearly, no or car not stolen gets higher probability. Therefore, the given features of car belongs to the not stolen class or outcome.